Greetings. I am your host, Glenn Alex, and you're watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. Each episode of The Glenn Alex Show focuses on a different aspect of health because my life's work is about total health. And I am on a mission to help as many people as I can be joyful, connected, confident, and complete. The life experience we call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. And in my mind, if more of us were living in total health, the world would be safe and loving for everyone. And I am super excited about this episode because I am going to learn something. So please help me welcome my guest, Anissa Hudak. Hi, Anissa. Hi, thanks for having me on. Oh, you're, thank you for making time. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ready to learn. <laughs> So just take a minute and tell us who you are and what you do, and then we'll get into the background, the story, and the information. Okay, well, um, as you said, my name is Anissa Hudak. I am a certified yoga therapist. I live in Manhattan, Kansas, where the livestock outnumber the people. Um, <laughs> you, you might have heard of it, uh, the uh, Kansas State Wildcats. Um, so that is right outside of Fort Riley, which okay. is an army Okay. How long have you been doing yoga therapy? Oh, probably six years. Okay. And what led you into that? I started taking yoga teacher training classes because I didn't want to go to anybody else's class. I didn't want to be on anybody else's schedule. And okay. so I wanted to do yoga on my own and keep myself safe. And about I don't know, a month after I finished my first class, I had two job offers. And I said, oh, I think the universe is trying to tell me something. And so I started teaching and I started taking more and more training classes. And a group of classes that the school was offering was called um, Yoga for Warriors. And it was for active duty and retired military for PTSD. Okay. And I was like, gosh, I live here in the, in the belly of the beast. I'm right outside of Fort Riley. We have a huge retirement and active duty com uh, community here. And we have a warrior transition battalion at Fort Riley. I, I should take these classes and bring them back for my community so I can you know, better serve them. And I was about halfway through the first day and I realized that the first person I had to work on was right here. Okay. And it became a journey of uh, self-discovery and self-healing. And along the way, I got to help people. And, and so now here I am, I'm a certified yoga therapist. I had never any plans of this okay. and I get to work with folks with PTSD. Okay. That's awesome. I I'm curious though, how your realization came about. Was it uh, your intuition prodding you? Was it um, just a, a, a whole body sensation? How did you real actually realize that you needed to work on yourself doing this work? Well, it was a whole lot of everything. Um, okay. Yes, it was realization. Yes, it was body sensations. But it was also sitting in these classes and um, the lectures and the education that they were imparting to us. And I realized, hey, I do that. Oh, I do that too. Oh, that's why I do that? Oh, okay. And that's kind of where the whole realization came in. I need to work on this. Okay. Well, let me commend you for being open to those messages and um, accepting the truth of those messages. So you could work on yourself and, and become this joyful, healthy, loving person or more so because a lot of people um, that I work with, they get those messages and they ignore them and they mm -hmm. ignore them. So I commend you for, for following through. Well, thank you. And I've had clients who do the same and it's because of fear. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the scary stuff that nobody wants to really work on. Yeah, it, it can be scary. <laughs> now, please explain the difference between yoga and yoga therapy. Well, if we were to look at yoga as a big pie and we slice it down the middle, on one half, we have fitness-based yoga. 
and you've got wonderful um, Ashtanga and Yin and Bikram and um, all kinds of aerial yoga and all kinds of fun stuff, all really fitness based. Will you have a, an emotional release on your mat? Will you have some realizations on the mat? Absolutely. However, those are more geared for fitness. Okay. On the other side of the pie, we have yoga therapy. And all of us kind of um, find a market that we like to work with. And so we've got, you know, yoga therapy for cardiac rehab and cancer and MS and Parkinson's and arthritis. And I happen to work with PTSD, trauma, and TBIs, traumatic brain injuries. Okay. So are the poses different? Are the length of time the poses are held different? Are the sequences different? I mean, what is different? What differentiates, if there is one thing you can name, what differentiates yoga therapy from yoga? Well, it all depends on your, your client. Um, what if they have any physical limitations? How can we adapt the poses to meet the body? We never want to make the body fit into a pose. Okay. It's always about adopting the pose to, to really fit the body. And so okay. that's part of it. Um, part of it is sequencing. Again, do they have any physical limitations? And what is our end goal? Okay. And so there's that. And then um, there's all kinds of other fun stuff. Like in my class, I never turn off the lights because sometimes in the dark, you know, people don't like that too much with PTSD. Um, I never leave my mat because walking okay. around makes people feel uncomfortable. Okay. So there's okay. a lot of other things that are different than in a regular fitness-based class. Okay. And so what was your appeal in working with um, trauma and PTSD and TBI? I knew it. I, I live it every day. I am a two-time rape survivor. And so I walk that walk every day and I get it. Okay. Well, bless you. Thank bless you. you. Okay. Well, if you want to share anything about your experiences, great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, in your sessions, are they typically group sessions or individual? Both. Both. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I have worked with as many as 30 in a group, although I did have other people kind of helping me with eyes and watching and, and what have you, because um, that's a lot of people to keep track of. When it's me, myself, I like seven people, no more than 10, but seven is like the sweet spot for me. And, okay. um, you know, one on one is also great. Okay. Now, what was your first step after you realized that you needed to work on you? Oh, crap. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no, that was pretty much, I was like, oh, crap, what do I do? <laughs> you know? Um, oh, crap. Um, yeah, we got a problem here. Yeah, it was, um, it was daunting. And I just kind of sat back and, you know, tried to be a sponge, listen to as much as I could in my classes, learn as much as I could, um, did a lot of research, did a lot of reading, um, and then just got on the mat. Okay. Did you um, kind of design your own um, class or program, yoga program to, to help yourself? Or you just got on the mat and did what felt what came to you? I knew um, what I needed. There's an actual scientific method of what we do and how we do the poses in a, a very specific way um, in okay. specific timing. And so in taking that um, that timing, I, you know, I was able to, um, yeah, change out poses if I wanted to. I can, you know, do things like that. And again, depending on what my client needs. Um, if they have any physical limitations. So um, within that framework, yes, I can switch things out, move things along, um, you know, what things are interchangeable, but um, no, I just kind of took that timing and, and that scientific method and just got on the mat with it and did it myself. Okay, okay. 
And you did yoga yourself every day? I'd like to say I did it every day. <laughs> you can't um, say it. <laughs> I could say that, but that's not exactly true. Um, you know, everybody's practice looks different from day to day. Sometimes it's just crawling on the mat and crying. Um, and that's, that's yoga. That's okay. Um, sometimes it's getting on there. And, and in fact, I just created a new playlist and I've literally been kicking my own butt with it. Um, and I've been enjoying it. Um, so it, it's all about what you need in that day. My mat is my best friend. I can tell it anything. It's my biggest confidant, <laughs> best confidant. Cause it doesn't talk back. There's no judgment. Can't tell anybody anything. And it holds all my secrets. Um, I'm kind of like Linus when it comes with my mat. <laughs> oh my I God. love my mat. <laughs> Thanks for that visual. <laughs> I can see you dragging your mat to the grocery store. <laughs> I've thought about it. I have thought about it. I actually had surgery once and I took it with me to the hospital. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's significant. <laughs> was in the corner of the room, but it was there with me. And, you know, so, yeah. You know, everybody should have a safety net. That's for sure. For sure. Now, um, we may not have enough, um, we don't have enough time uh, left in this segment, but I do want to talk about, I want you to talk about the science of yoga therapy. So you can, can you just give us a quick introduction before we go to commercial? Absolutely. PTSD starts in the body before it becomes a mental health issue. And in knowing that we are able to actually guide our clients through certain poses and certain timing and certain ways to actually help them release the PTSD that's stored on a cellular level in the body. Wow. That is fascinating. Okay. As simple and as complicated as that. Okay. I want more. I want more. So, that was part of your yoga therapy, um, the courses you took. Yes. Okay. And it obviously goes a little deeper than that scientifically, but I did ask you for an overview, right? And I gave you an overview. <laughs> yeah. You did. I didn't expect it to be that succinct. So <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, this seems like a really good time to take a, a short commercial break. Um, I am Glenn Alex, and you're watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. When we return, Anissa and I will, well, Anissa will have more on the science of yoga therapy. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. 
Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Welcome back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you're watching The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV Network. I am here with the Nissa Hudak Certified Yoga Therapist, and I'm learning some stuff about yoga therapy versus yoga and how yoga therapy can heal trauma. So Anissa, if you want to pick up where you left off on um, giving us information about the science of yoga therapy, I'm, I'm really excited to hear this. Well, okay. So <laughs> first we need to talk about PTSD and how it actually starts in the body, because that's important. Um, have you ever seen two dogs fight? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And after they're done and they're walking away from one another, what have you noticed them doing? Oh, well, I hadn't watched that part. I guess they shake. I don't know. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. They shake. And okay. that's the key to this. So just like dogs, humans, okay. we, um, we actually have, for our purposes in this conversation, we have two brains. We have the upper echelon brain, which is where you do, you know, math problems and logistics and, um, you know, your grocery list. And um, it's also where you do all of your emotional regulation up in the upper echelon brain. Okay. And then we have what we call the reptilian brain. Mm. And it, it handles things like, you know, blinking and breathing and things we don't think about. And it also controls the fight, flight, freeze or fawn mechanism. Okay. So let's say we're in a car accident and um, our bodies instinctively go into fight, flight, freeze or fawn. Well, afterwards, let's say you shake and I don't, or I don't get a chance to shake. That shaking mechanism is what takes us out of the reptilian brain because we don't live there. It just kind of happens in the background. And it takes us back up into the upper echelon brain where we actually do live from. Okay. So that shaking mechanism actually resets the central nervous system. And there you go. You went back. Well, I didn't shake or I didn't get the opportunity to shake. Maybe somebody was holding me and was trying to get me not to shake. Okay. As humans, we hate to see people shaking. So... If I don't shake, then I don't get to reset my central nervous system and I get stuck in the reptilian brain. Okay. That's where PTSD comes into effect. Okay. So then it starts that way. And, and then from there, it goes into depression, anxiety, hypervigilance, and all of the things that we associate with PTSD. Okay. But first, it starts in the body. In the body. Interesting. Now, from there, what we're able to do with the yoga therapy is actually help the body recreate that shaking mechanism to help reset the central nervous system. Okay. And it's kind of like chiropractic care. You know, the more you do it, the more it sticks, the longer it sticks. And so we're able to get people to be in their upper echelon brain longer and longer and longer because we're helping to reset that central nervous system. Okay. That's, um, that's pretty powerful. I'm just trying to take it in and absorb it. And, um, I was actually in the car accident, um, in 2007, uh, 2017. And so, I went back to that as you were speaking and I did go kind of into freezing because I knew the impact was coming and I braced myself for it. And I went into slack, I slacked all my muscles. And so I wouldn't, you know, create that extra tension for injury or whatever. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to absorb what you're saying about it starting in the body first. And then, um, wow see how that applies on a daily basis. So when your clients are releasing 
the the trauma um, during the yoga session, does it help them um, experience the the symptoms of PTSD less through their regular days through through the rest of the day? Yes. Okay. It also creates more bandwidth to be able to take on more and more stresses. I mean, unfortunately, we kind of live a stressful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it creates more bandwidth for them to be able to take on more stresses, you know, of their everyday lives. But it also helps to release some of the baggage that they're carrying that they don't have to carry. And they can release that uh, on the mat. Okay. Now, do you do any kind of uh, assessments um, pre, mid, post to see um, if they, their flashbacks um, have declined, the hypervigilance has declined, anything like that? Or is it just their personal reports? When someone starts with me, I do an assessment. Um, I see you know, where they're struggling the most, what are their um, most bothersome symptoms. And, um, you know, then after a couple of times on the mat, I'll, you know, um, very quietly talk with them about, um, generally in, in a group setting, you know, I'll, I'll pull them aside very quietly and talk with them, you know, after class. Um, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's obviously easier. And um, just kind of get a sense, you know, how are you feeling? What are you noticing? What's good? What's not so good? Um, things like that, just so I can get some feedback and see where do I need to tweak what we're doing, uh, different poses or what have you, to really um, get the effect that we want to get, reach the end goal. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say right now. I'm done. <laughs> Now, do you do classes any virtually? Everything is virtual. Oh, everything um, is, mentioned. okay. Yeah, everything is virtual now. Um, as I mentioned, um, I live in a place where the livestock outnumber the people. Okay. And the cows were not digging the yoga. <laughs> the bison are totally into it, but not the cows. So um, yeah, I am completely <laughs> online. Um, <laughs> I specifically work with women who were like me, who have been sexually assaulted. Okay. And um, so I figured, you know, it's, it doesn't just happen in my town or, you know, in my country, I'm able to work with women all over the world, which has been amazing. Okay. That, that is amazing. And that's the kind of the blessing of the pandemic is that we've learned to do all these things virtually and, and reach more people and help more people. So Okay, well, let me take a second here and just mention, uh, you can comment um, anytime during this live broadcast. Anissa and I will see your comments and respond to them. So feel free to type us, type us a message. I think you have to be logged into your Facebook or your YouTube account in order for the comment to come through during the broadcast. Otherwise, uh, we'll take calls in the next segment and I will give you that number shortly. Okay, so is there, what else do you want us to know about the science of yoga therapy? Well, I hate to burst everybody's bubble. Uh-oh. It, it is science. It's not okay. smoke and mirrors. It's not voodoo. It's not witchcraft. It's actually science. Yoga is actually all science, believe it or not. Okay. So um, I know that that really bursts some people's bubble. <laughs> But it's true. It's all science. And um, when I looked at it and I realized it was all science, I was like, oh, well, heck, this is easy. We can do this. Um, there's, you know, nothing magical. I, I don't really do anything magical. You don't, you don't do magic tricks? I don't. I don't. I don't stand on my head, I, you know, no, nor do my clients. Um, <laughs> no, I don't do any magic tricks. Okay. Well, I'm so impressed right now that I'm, I'm not disappointed. So. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I appreciate it. Okay. Now, are there any um, poses that are um, common between yoga and yoga therapy, like down dog, upper dog, um, child's pose? Well, absolutely child's pose. That's my favorite pose other than Shavasana. Okay. Um, final relaxation. Um, and I think everybody can pretty much, if you're a yogi, you can say that Shavasana is probably 
your favorite pose. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, um, child's pose is important. You always need a place where you can go and reset, whether it's your brain, your breath, your body. Um, child's pose is, is vitally important for that. Um, okay. Legs up the wall. Some people call that waterfall. Okay. And that is a really uh, great pose for both, um, you know, fitness and therapy um, for what I do, uh, PTSD. Um, all of the, you know, your, your legs are up on a wall and all of that blood is, you know, reaching, coming down into the trunk of your body. The heart doesn't have to pump as hard and it gets really oxygenated. And then that goes up to the brain and you're having this really rich oxygenated blood into your brain. It's wonderful and very soothing. Um, if you're having trouble with sleep, that's a great one to do. Um, you know, 15 minutes. If you have any hypertension, you probably want to do five to seven minutes, no more than 10. Okay. Um, but that, that's a great pose. Um, butterfly pose. Some people also call it cobbler pose. Okay. And that's a great pose for opening up those hips and, um, a lot of trauma and, and all of your emotion actually is, is stored in the hips. And so that's a great one as a hip opener to uh, help release trauma and emotion. Okay. So those are a couple of poses that are, you know, on both sides of the pie, so to speak. Okay. Well, I, I've taken a lot of yoga classes and they've, the poses have never been explained that way. And as you were speaking, I was starting to uh, relax a little too much about the waterfall. <laughs> you but see again, me all over. <laughs> yoga is all science. There's a reason we do these poses. They do something specific in the body. It's not just to see you do tree. There's a scientific reason why you do that pose in a certain way. It has an effect on the body. And, um, you know, sometimes we talk about it in classes, sometimes we don't, but it's all science. Okay. Now, what would you say to the person who doesn't do yoga because they're not flexible? Oh. <laughs> you get that a lot, don't you? Could you tell? <laughs> um, I say to that person, when you go to the gym and you are lifting weights, do you do that because you're already strong? Good point. Probably not. Probably not. We get on a yoga mat to become flexible. And the beauty of that flexibility is not only do we see it in our bodies over time, but then we actually begin to live that flexibility off our mats. And that's when we really start to be living our yoga. And that's the beauty of it. Okay. Awesome stuff. Oh, this is so fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's time to take another short break. I am Glenn Alex, and this is the Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. When we return, Anissa and I will be ready to take your calls. So um, get your questions ready and call 866 451 1451. 866 451-1451 and stay tuned. We'll be right back to speak with you. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. 
Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Network and tune in radio as Dr. RC will provide thought provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV Network. I am here with, <laughs> excuse me, I'm all choked up because I'm just excited about what I'm learning. I'm here with Anissa Hudak, certified yoga therapist, learning about yoga therapy, how it helps heal trauma and the science of it. And right now we are, op the lines are open, so we would love to hear from you. 866-451-1451. 866-451-1451. And feel free to comment at any time during the live broadcast. Okay, Anissa, while we're waiting for calls and comments to come in, um, does yoga therapy help with all types of traumas? You mentioned PTSD and TBI, but what about other types of trauma? Um, are there any others that it, it covers? It would cover all types of trauma, absolutely. Okay. Okay, and then just getting into um, where an individual stores the trauma in their body. Well, that would be in the hips. Um, a lot of people know it as the hip flexors. Okay. Um, we refer to it as the psoas muscle group. Okay. And um, it is like the emotional warehouse of your body. It's, in my opinion, humble opinion, it is the most important muscles that you have in your entire body, because without them, you would be defenseless. Um, they are the muscles that create the fetal position. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're hurt, um, if you're sick and you curl up in that fetal position, you're doing so because you, you want to protect all of the vital organs in the trunk. Um, and so without those, that, those two muscles, you would be defenseless. Okay. okay. They also are the emotional warehouse of your body. They hold everything, your joy, your, your grief, your anger, your frustration, um, your excitement, everything is held there. And so what we are doing is really um, working that muscle group from the back of your knee all the way up to where the skull meets the base of your spine. It's a whole muscle group that we're, we're working to exhaustion. Okay. And then when it starts to shake and you've, you've done, you've been at the gym, you know, I mean, you, you work your muscles, you get a little twinge, right? Yes. That is mimicking that res resetting of the central nervous system. Okay. Okay. That is fascinating. Fascinating. Now I, I read in your profile, um, about something about mindful stress reduction. Tell us about that. Yes. So being mindful is, um, being present, being in the moment, which for a lot of people with PTSD is virtually impossible. They're either too anxious. And so they're, in the future, thinking about everything that could possibly go wrong, or they're in the past dealing with depression and reliving that awful experience that got them there. Mm -hmm. But they're never present. And so one of the great things about yoga is that you have to be present on your mat or you're going to fall over. Yes. 
I took this particular course to really help my clients be able to um, take that um, present feeling and incorporate it in other ways in their life that they could do it off the mat. Okay. I, I think you've been listening to my counseling sessions because really? I, <laughs> I often recommend yoga, um, not only because it, it helps burn off that negative energy um, and that nervous stuff, but I tell them that yoga in yoga it helps you learn to be present because if you're not you can injure yourself you can do a pose wrong and you can fall over so i thank you for reinforcing that <laughs> okay have no excuse they have to get on a mat thank you thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna replay this for them <laughs> Okay. So with the, the, the mindfulness based stress reduction, um, do you have a meditation component to your classes or the, the whole yoga session designed to be mindful? The whole session is designed to be mindful. However, um, I do incorporate yoga nidra, which if you've never done yoga nidra, it is so yummy. Um, it is a wonderful type of meditation. 20 minutes of yoga nidra rest is equivalent to two hours of sleep. Really? Yes. I'm telling okay. you, it's yummy. very yummy. And for a lot of folks with PTSD and, and trauma related issues, sleep is an issue. Yes. You know, because yes. that's kind of, you know, it's, it's dark and your eyes are closed and it's, scary stuff happens there. You're alone, you know, in your mind. I yeah, hear. scary stuff happens there. Whereas if they could keep their mind occupied with something like yoga nidra and even fall asleep to it, which is absolutely fine, they're able to, you know, get the rest that they need. Okay. I did not know that about yoga nidra. I've done some yoga nidra for sleep and I consciously don't make it all the way through the end. I fall asleep before <laughs> the program ends. And that's totally cool because that's what it, your body needed in that moment and you got it. Yes, yes, it, and, and it is yummy. It is very yummy. Now, um, how long do your clients stay with, with you? Um, or do they get to a point where they say, I'm okay, I can go on without this uh, therapy or how does that program work? Well, that's the end goal. I mean, as, okay. a, as any type of therapist, you want to get your client to a point where they no longer need you. Um, they only maybe stick around because they like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I mean, that's the whole end goal. So yeah, absolutely. I've had folks, you know, sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's three years, whatever it takes, whatever they need. Um, but you, you know, kind of nice when they stick around because they like you. Yes, yes. Now, I'm, I'm a clinical social worker, so I, I say this um, before I ask you this question. Because PTSD starts in the body, would you recommend yoga therapy before psychotherapy? Absolutely not. Okay, because? Because you need to do both. Okay. You can't do one without the other. You have to treat the whole body. You're a whole person. You have a body and a brain. You have to treat the whole person. I have a therapist. Okay. Why wouldn't I? Right. Uh, I mean, but you have to treat the whole body. And here in the West, we, we compartmentalize. You know, we've got our body and we've got our brain. You, you, gotta, you gotta work on both at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the whole person approach to any kind of healing process because you, you can't separate your mind from your body, from your spirit, from your emotions. You just, you just can't. It's useful to isolate them to um, see what needs to be done in that area. Yet it, it, there's, those elements are so interconnected and interdependent. So I, I totally agree with that. And medication is helpful in some ways. 
Absolutely. But that's not the only answer. That's not the only answer. Absolutely not. However, I, I also am on meds. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. okay to take meds. It's okay to see a therapist. It's okay to get on a mat. You, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Bottom line is it is okay to get help. Oh, giving up is not an option. Absolutely not. Giving up is not an option. You have to reach out and get the help that you need. You know, it's not pleasant. I mean, nobody's, we're not going to sugarcoat it. It's not pleasant. It's not fun. Nobody likes doing this. However, life is so much better on the other side. Yeah. You got to get there. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, in, in your group classes, have you had any, um, any clients have emotional releases during the class that, um, I don't know, they either had to leave the class, you had to stop the class, or they couldn't continue? Does it get that intense? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. And that's okay. Okay. And that tells me that if they allow themselves to get that intense and to go that far in the release, that they are open to the healing process. They're not trying to hide it and pretend that it's, they're not as affected by it. There's no shame in it. No, actually, I, um, I cheer for people when they start crying on their mats. And when I'm doing a group class and, you know, um, I have my regulars with me or what have you. And, um, and they know what's coming. They know what I'm going to do. They know I'm going to cheer. And a lot of them start cheering with me. Okay. Let it out. Let it out. Leave it behind. You don't have to carry it. Keep crying. Keep crying. And I, um, I had a woman who did this. She broke down in class. And we all cheered for her. And afterwards, she sent me an email. And she said, what a wonderful experience. I didn't feel ashamed. I wasn't embarrassed. I was cheered. I, I, I was cheered to cry and to release and to let go. And what a, a safe, warm, welcoming environment to do that in. Thank you. Mm. That's lovely. Giving me warm fuzzies. <laughs> Now, what would you say to the person who um, sees themselves as defined by their trauma, that it happened to them because they're unlovable, they're unworthy, something's wrong with them? Well, we all feel like that. I mean, the worst trauma that could ever happen to a person is their own, right? Um, You know, everybody feels that way at some point in their trauma journey for okay. the most part. Okay. Don't get stuck there because you can overcome it. And life is so much better on the other side. You just have to make your mind up that you're going to overcome it. Okay. And then open yourself up to healing. Yeah. I mean, if you're not open to healing, you're not going to heal. Right. Right. Okay. All right. This is good news, folks. This is good news. Okay. Well, it's time to take our last break. I'm Glenn Alex, and you're watching the Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. When we return, Anissa will sum up healing from trauma with yoga therapy. And please stay tuned and we'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? 
Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for the Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. We are back. I am Glenn Alex, host of the Glenn Alex Show here live on the Bold Brave TV Network. Just had an, a fascinating and amazing conversation with Anissa Hudak, certified yoga therapist about how yoga therapy heals trauma and the science behind it. And I, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm just blown away. So Anissa, thank you so much for making time to be here and to share your wisdom and your expertise with us. If you can, can you sum up healing with yoga therapy from trauma in one nugget or what is the one takeaway you want viewers to have? You need to surround yourself with a healing team and you need to find someone who really meets your needs. Um, one of the things that I did was my current therapist only deals with um, sexual trauma. Okay. Um, so make sure, you know, your therapist, you know, if you have sexual trauma, don't go to a marriage and, you know, counselor, don't, right. don't see a family therapist. Um, they might be very good at what they do. However, they may not be very good for what you need. Mm -hmm. The same is true with your yoga. If you are in need of, of yoga therapy for whatever reason, you may not be able to get that at your corner neighborhood yoga studio. And that's it's not a dig on them. They probably are very good at what they do. However, you have specific needs. Um, there is a website and it is um, IAYT, International Association of Yoga Therapists.com. And you can go there and look up all kinds of therapists, yoga therapists, and um, see if you, you can find someone who can meet your needs. Okay. Okay. So get a healing team. Get a healing team around you that meets okay. your specific needs. Okay. So how can someone contact you, get more information about your program? Well, my website is traumahealingyoga.com. Okay. And at the website, there is a free body scan meditation, which is also very yummy if you have ever done a body scan. Uh, they're pretty yummy. And there is one available um, to for everyone uh, there. It's absolutely free to download. And then on social media, I am I'm kind of like a bad penny. I kind of show up all over the place, trauma healing yoga. Okay. Um, however, I'm not groovy. I am not on TikTok or Snapchat. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Just the regular ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Anissa, I thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. I did learn a lot from you. And I love the work you're doing. Thank you so much for helping others heal and for healing yourself so you can have that beautiful radiant smile that you have. So thank you again for being here. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You take care.
You too, thanks. Okay. And thank you for joining us today. We hope that you learned you can heal from trauma. Events such as abuse, car accidents, natural disasters can be traumatic and trauma is haunting, which negatively impacts your normal functioning, your mood, your sleep, your focus, your trust in others, your sense of security, your ability to digest food and your sense of self-worth are significantly altered by trauma, which can lead to self-medicating, abuse of self or others, suicide. So I want you to know that you can heal and grow through the pain because your traumatic experience is not a judgment against your worthiness and lovability. So please seek help, yoga therapy, a professional licensed or certified mental health provider to start your healing journey today. For more about my work and my book, Living in Total Health, visit glennalex.com and join us next week on The Glenn Alex Show here on the Bold Brave TV network. And until next time, be well. Thank you.